Next question. A compound of molecular mass 60 grams per mole, so this is the true molecular mass, is known to contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now, this is asked in a bit of a different way. We are told that we have a sample containing so much of the compound, and then we burn it, and it produces carbon dioxide and water, and it tells us the masses of each of those. From this, we have to get the molecular formula of the compound. Molecular formula formula is also called true formula. They are synonyms. So what's happening is you have this amount of the original compound. There it is. And that original compound contains a certain mass, we don't know what it is, of carbon. A certain mass, we don't know how much, of hydrogen and a certain mass of oxygen because it only contains carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. And if we can know these masses, then we have a mass ratio which we can convert into a particle ratio to get a simplest formula, empirical formula. Now, when this burns during combustion, during burning, some oxygen, a certain mass of oxygen from the air, combines with the carbon, the hydrogen, and the oxygen from the compound to produce these two products, carbon dioxide and water and these masses of each. We get that from there. So the tricky thing to realize is that not all the O inside the product actually came from the original compound. Some of it came from the air. So you've got to be careful with that. But all the carbon and hydrogen that ended up in the products they came from the original carbon and hydrogen inside the original compound. So if we can find out the masses, how many grams of each of these we have, then we know the masses of carbon and hydrogen that we had in the original compound. Then we can find the mass of oxygen from the difference from the total. So remember, we're trying to find the mass ratio of these compounds because once we have the mass ratio, we can get a simplest formula. We can convert the mass ratio into a particle ratio and get the simplest formula, the empirical formula, which is the first step. So we start off with the carbon dioxide. We know that we have 0, 3664 grams of carbon dioxide in the products. And what we're interested in is how much of that mass is actually carbon, because that will tell us the mass of carbon in the original compound, because all the carbon in the product came from the original. So what is the mass? How many grams of carbon inside 0, 3664 grams of carbon dioxide. So we use a conversion factor which has grams of carbon dioxide at the bottom to cancel that away and grams of carbon at the top to introduce the required unit. Now we must make sure that our conversion factor has equivalent values at the top and the bottom. They must both refer to the same amount of carbon dioxide, one mole of carbon dioxide. So we ask ourselves, one mole of carbon dioxide how many grams of carbon are there in that? And how many grams of carbon dioxide are there in that? A whole mole of carbon dioxide has a mass of 44 grams. 12 for the carbon and 2 times 16 for the oxygen. Of those 44 grams, 12 grams of them are contributed by the carbon. So one mole of carbon dioxide contains 12 grams of carbon in it and has a total mass of 44 grams for the whole carbon dioxide. So if instead of a whole mole we have this amount of carbon dioxide, then what mass of carbon is inside that? 0 0.3664 times 12 divided by 44 is equal to 0, 0,0999 grams of carbon. So the importance of this is that we have found how much of the original compound was made of carbon. Next step, we want to know the mass of the hydrogen in the original compound. All that hydrogen ends up in the water. So we want to know how much of that 0, 0,15 grams of water in the product is made of hydrogen and that is the amount of hydrogen that was in the original compound because no hydrogen came from outside of the original compound to form the product. So how many grams of hydrogen atoms do we have inside 0, 0,15 
grams of water. Our conversion factor has grams of water at the bottom and grams of hydrogen at the top. Both top and bottom must refer to equivalent amounts. They can both refer to one mole of water molecules. The mass of one mole of water molecules is 18 grams, and there are 2 grams of hydrogen inside there. 0.15 times 2 divided by 18, 0, 0,0167 grams of hydrogen atoms. That is the mass of hydrogen that was in the original compound. So we now know how much of the original compound was carbon, this amount, how much of the original compound was hydrogen, this amount, the rest must be oxygen. So the mass of oxygen must be the total mass minus hydrogen's mass minus carbon's mass. Total mass is 0, 0,25 grams. Hydrogen's mass, go back here, was 0, 0,0167 grams. And carbon's mass, we go back, was 0, 0,0999 grams. So everything left over of the total must, of course, be oxygen. 0 0.25 minus 0 0.0167 minus 0 0.0999 is 0, 0,1334 grams oxygen. And that is the mass of the oxygen in the original compound. It's not the mass in the products because some came from the air as well. That's why we couldn't work it out the same way that we did for carbon and hydrogen. So now we know the mass ratio of the original compound. So now we can work out the empirical formula, which is the first step, and then go on to get the true formula, which is what we actually asked. So our elements are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And we've seen from what has just come before that the ratio, the mass ratio, is 0, 0,0999 grams of carbon for every 0, 0,0167 grams of hydrogen for every 0, 0,133 four grams of oxygen. I just got that from what we had calculated before. Remember all of this which we had calculated before. So next we need to convert that mass ratio into a mole ratio. How many moles of carbon is 0, 0,0999 grams when we have one mole of carbon having a mass of 12 grams? Answer 0, 0,0083 moles of carbon. How many moles of hydrogen atoms do we have when we have 0, 0,0167 grams of hydrogen if one mole of hydrogen atoms has a mass of one gram? So obviously the answer is 0, 0,0167 moles of hydrogen atoms. How many moles of oxygen atoms do we have when we have a mass of 0, 0,1334 grams when one mole of oxygen atoms has a mass of 16 grams? 0.1334 divided by 16, 0, 0,0083 moles of oxygen atoms. Next, we simplify and if necessary also multiply if we don't get a nice whole number ratio immediately. We take the smallest of the numbers. Now be careful. Yes, this 1 is smaller than 8, but you see that the 8 is 10 times smaller than that 1 because it's further along behind the decimal comma. So this is the smallest of the numbers here. So we divide through by that. 0, 0,0083 divided by itself is obviously 1. Notice we always end with one of the numbers being 1 using this method. That's what simplifying means. 0, 0,0167 divided by this small number 0, 0,0083 is 2,01. We round it off to 2. The difference is probably rounding off error and probably some experimental error in the readings. And obviously this one here being the same number as what we had for carbon, it's also the smallest number, is also going to give us 1. So we have very easy time. We don't need to multiply because by simplifying we end up with a whole number ratio. So our ratio is C1, which we don't write, H2O 
one, but we don't write the ones. So what's the simplest molar mass of this? 12 for the carbon, 2 times 1 for the hydrogen, 16 for the oxygen, 30 grams per mole. That is the simplest molar mass. But we were given the true molar mass as 60 grams per mole. So we find the factor by which they are different by taking the true molar mass, 60 gram per mole, dividing it by the simplest molar mass. Obviously, the answer is 2, meaning that the true molar mass is twice as big as the simplest molar mass. And therefore, the true formula must have twice as many atoms of each kind as the simplest formula or the empirical formula. So it should be C2H4O2.